Coming up this week on Kings of the Rings podcast, my goodness, has it been so long since the last weird rally in MSG? I bet it has, folks. And since then, WWE, AEW, we've got a lot of stuff to talk about. Uh, an announcer left, an announcer returned. WWE's going back to the Indies. And oh yeah, there's that thing in Saudi Arabia that's actually worth something this time around. So sit back, relax. It is just myself and the big K here with us. Kings of the Rings podcast, episode number 392, The Crown Fools, exclusively on Wrestle Attic Radio, and it starts Midnight right now. Music. Ah, it feels lighter today, Kay, doesn't it? Midnight music. Whoa, 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 <laughs> whoa, whoa. Oh, goodness gracious. Coming in with the heat, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Kings of the Rings Podcast. That's not heat. We just have one less person here. <laughs> welcome to Kings of the Rings Podcast, episode number 392, The Crown Fools. I'm your host, King Ricky Rose. Thank you guys for joining us uh, back after our brief, almost an entire month hiatus. Uh, we're, we're back here because we don't, want to, we don't really want to watch the Yankees right now. It is not looking great here in New York. But the, oh, I'm watching the Yankees. But, yeah, keep me posted. But the Liberty one. You know, a basketball team in New York actually won a championship. It's definitely never going to be the Knicks in my lifetime. Uh, but that, that that is a thing. Anywho, folks, I think you guys are joining us. If you like what you're listening to uh, or what you're watching right now, currently live on uh, on Twitch, on Facebook, on YouTube, please like, share, subscribe. Leave us a great, lovely review. And even if you don't like us, leave us a review, too, because, hey, that just helps us out even more. Um, links to all of that are in the description below with me. My companion, my compadre, six years of friendship and somehow still a Jets fan. Big KK Fabe, how are you? Well, not doing good. <laughs> I'm a Jets fan. That's true. <laughs> um, no, I'm doing good. Um, I'm off of work this week, so I'm getting some very desperately needed. <laughs> My royal fact is I'm not still a Jets fan. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you think I got that from? <laughs> well, no, I watch. So I watch the stream on Twitch when we're doing the show. So I make feel like I'm making eye contact with you. Okay, understandable. I get that. That's why I'm. That's why I'm always delayed with the, phys- the with the visuals. <laughs> Because I'm trying to make eye contact and not be a fucking weirdo, <laughs> but I'm still being a fucking weirdo anyway. You're fine, um, Kay. It's okay. So yeah, um, I'm doing good. Um, I'm sorry to everyone that likes the Yankees because we're al- y'all already losing. <laughs> Wait, already? Uh, yeah, it's two nothing. How? Um, a couple of minutes ago, Wait, oh, there were, I thought, I assumed you were watching. I didn't want to say anything. I mean, I could be watching, but I don't want to. Uh, oh, Freddie Freeman yeah. hit another freaking home run. This guy has hit a home <laughs> run in every freaking game of the World Series. I shit you not. Why are we pitching it, to him? It was very quick. I, like, I can imagine. I feel like, the game, <laughs> like the game, I feel like had just started. Oh, it's only the bo- and it's only the bottom of the first. Yes, this this happened. This is the same thing that happened yesterday. Okay, this is the exact same yeah. thing that happened yesterday. God damn it! All right, we're gonna get sore. I will say. I will say though, the Soto shuffle is a fucking box. <laughs> like I again, obviously I'm an OMG fan, but the Soto shuffle fucking slaps, and I listen uh. to it with headphones on. <laughs> All the time. <laughs> I, 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 I bet you do. I bet you do. Uh, yes, I, I agree with you, Sir Charles. I might as well just hit him with the ball at this point. <laughs> Stop pitching <laughs> to Freddie Freeman. He's got a bum leg. He can't even run, but he will give him everything for a freaking home run. Jesus Christ. This is ridiculous. All right, all right. Let's refocus. Back back to the world of wrestling. So sorry. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Um, oh, thank you for that update, because NXT is also going on at the moment at the time of this recording here on a Tuesday. But we're going to get into not much NXT, but go into a little bit of a recap of the last time we were here. We did talk about this thing called AEW Wrestle Dream, and that show occurred. Um, the biggest. It did. <laughs> yes, it did. Out of this is that Daniel Bryan retired. 
Oh, that's when I went on vacation. Or that's Brian Danielson this. retired, if I want to say that actually uh, in, in the correct form, because Daniel Bryan is a WWE IP. Mm-hmm. Brian Danielson retired. So as we know, the stipulation was for Brian Danielson, that is, if he ever lost the AEW world title, he would no longer be a full-time wrestling participant in AEW, effectively retiring. John Moxley beat him. They had a pretty John Moxley's kind of taken over AEW and kind of being a weird psychotic John Moxley character, as he always is. Um and and he they beat down Daniel Bryan, and Daniel Bryan has not been Brian Danson, my apologies, has not been seen since. We all thought Brian Danielson was going to win, and we all forgot that Wrestle Dream was in Tacoma, Washington. Where is Brian Danielson from? The state of Washington. They should have, should have been an easy one for us to predict and see coming, and we totally glossed over it. I like. I remember specifically saying, "I'm like Daniel Bryan's got time." <laughs> No, he didn't. <laughs> he, he did not. He did not. Um, I, I will say this about the Brian Danson thing. One, congratulations. Uh, don't ever get into a ring again. You've done enough. <laughs> you know, I, I yeah. find it interesting that a form. I mean, I, I know Moxie was on the indies, but essentially a former WWE guy got the rub from a former WWE guy. Instead of you know some <laughs> instead of someone else taking out Brian Danielson, you know. So- I feel like at this point, like everyone's a fucking former WWE guy. At some point, I mean, you know, the the wrestling world is small, and people and with more opportunities for professional wrestlers, especially with an AWWE and hell, even TNA have Bound for Glory this past weekend. Um, you know, there's going to be people who's going to be going back and forth. I mean, the Motor City Machine Guns just showed up in WWE and won the title, won the tag titles. By the that way, that was craziness. How? All right, sideberg a little bit. How you were there in the crowd in Brooklyn? I was there with the Motor City Machine Guns. How was that? Yo, everyone lost their fucking mind. The crowd was hot as always in Brooklyn. Like, yeah, I they're a wrestling been to crowd a in Brooklyn, Brooklyn too. Show in a while. Oh, it was. One that, it was probably the best show I've been to in a long time, but that entire match, that entire segment, like people were clamoring for Motor City Machine Guns. You literally saw DIY and the Motor City Machine Guns, who DIY pretty much takes our whole style from Motor City Machine Guns, mm-hmm. by the way. And then you had Motor City Machine Guns going up against the Gorillas of Destiny, if we're going to go really indie, which, by the way, Michael Cole did mention on commentary. Oh, he did. He did mention that they had history in new Japan. Um, so you got to see like these legendary tag teams that had never really faced off in WWE all in one night. And absolutely wild. It was tag team majesty. (laughs) It was, it was a, it was a really tag team heavy night. It was, it was WWE is really up in their tag teams. Uh, solo Sokoa is now has a character now. He did his impact line was actually kind of funny. Yeah. He's like, yeah, you want to make an impact. <laughs> I get oh, I, I giggled. I'm like, then I'm like, oh wow. I don't think he's ever made me laugh before. <laughs> oh my god, I totally forgot. You got to see the Usos hug it out. Oh my god, can I tell you? I cried. <laughs> I wouldn't expect anything less from you. No, like actual like i haven't like cried, you had cried real and, like, tears a shown i had true tears <laughs> I, I don't know i've always loved the usos always and i've been like wanting them to get back together for so long but like i knew it had to be the right moment mm-hmm. i didn't think i'd be there <laughs> literally a last minute decision literally like four hours before this, I was like, Yo, do we want to go we we bought tickets jumped on the train and awesome it was such a great night of tv next week's episode spoiler ruled okay hello so speaking of which before we we're gonna move on we're gonna talk about that a little bit so so smackdown tv smackdown was two hours then you had to film uh next this week's smackdown so how long were you at barclays for okay so here's the deal um i did not know they were doing a double taping okay so i got there for eight i got there at eight o'clock but the show had already been Uh, going on yep so oh. 
So apparently, first bell was pro- was by six forty five, seven o'clock. I thought doors were at six forty five. Oh, we tried to get we had tried to get there a little bit earlier, but we ran into some train issues. Of course, so we were like delayed. So like we like we were running into bar like we were checking in at seven fifty five. Damn. Okay. All right. That makes sense. So they did a quick. Did a quick so segment. I. So, but what I didn't realize do, throughout the taping, mm-hmm. and this really nice, we were sitting next to this like little kid and his mom. Yeah. And this kid was, I don't think I've ever enjoyed sitting next to a kid so much at a wrestling show. Like he like <laughs> lived and breathed lesson, but he explained to me, he's like, they're filming two episodes. And but they were filming it out of order. So what was going on live for you for y'all on TV was not happening in Barclays. Oh, so sneaky I was motherfuckers. Fucking, I was fuck so the tag team, like Motor City Machine Guns, were like winning the titles and like the Usos hugging it out. That was like an out my the first hour into the night. Oh, those so sneaky I, bastards! So like, and I'm like checking social media. I'm like, why is no one talking about this? I was really confused. And then like two hours later, my other wrestling group chat, my one friend is like a huge Motor City and he's like losing his shit. He's like, are they going to win the title right now? And then I'm like, oh, my God, I know. And I'm like, I'm like, look, I'm there. I can't tell you anything. But yeah, they filmed it out of order because I noticed some of the segments like Mm -hmm. you would see the, uh, the graphic that says Crown Jewel tomorrow. And I'm like, what the fuck? That makes sense. Okay. So I missed, I didn't see the um, Andrade and Carmelo Hayes match. Oh, you missed the best of seven. I did, but I low key, that was going to be my get food match. Okay. <laughs> so I didn't re- miss anything. And I missed, I missed some stuff that happened is going to happen on this week's SmackDown. Okay, that's what DVR is for. But I already don't, yeah, but I already don't remember what it is. It's a go home, right? So, uh, uh, sideburn over. Let's revert back to Brian Danielson. Man's had a hell of a career. Um, I really hope he doesn't come back into the ring anytime soon. I would love for him to remain in AEW, like, you know, as a backstage agent or somebody to help creatively with stuff. But I, I just don't want to see him in the ring. I think he's done enough, and there's much, there's not much more else he can do. Uh, I've seen him live. Him live is unbelievable, especially during the Yes Movement era. Absolutely mm-hmm. ridiculous. Like we, I got to see me, Will, and Dave got to see Brian Danson come back at WrestleMania on his like return tour. That's crazy. You know when he was in New Orleans, that was you know crazy freaking time. Uh, but I mean, I wish this guy all the best. You know, as pickle as he can be, and probably the greatest thing I ever, s- yeah, probably the greatest thing I ever saw him do was. Do his best heel character ever to put over Kofi. It's one of the greatest matches yes. I've ever seen live. And it takes a that is in my top five for matches I've seen live. Yeah. And, and it takes a really special talent to be that unselfish to help someone else, you know, have their moment on the biggest stage in wrestling. Mm-hmm. And he did that. He he, you know, like that match is like Kofi's moment is nothing without Brian Danson doing all of that amazing character work. That he did, and the way that they conduct constructed that match, unbelievable. Sold the show at Mania 35. Mm-hmm. Um, be but as it may. But Kay, what are your thoughts on the 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 end of essentially the, the end of the full time career of Brian Danielson? I think that I was very excited to see him have a second wind and get to have a, a run in AEW and even come back in WWE. Like we never thought we'd see him again. And Daniel uh, Brian Danielson was part of a movement where it showed that people that we thought could never come back could. Yeah. And having that Cinderella story kind of, you know, manifest into so many different characters and iterations of himself over years has been really interesting to watch. However, like he's given so much, he deserves to like ride off into the sunset, go play with his kids, like get the fuck out of the ring for the sake of his neck. Seriously. But I could see, I could see him like being a coach, like in the back or a producer in the back or even like a a general manager again. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. More. I don't think he's done with wrestling, but I think he's done with the ring. Yeah. I, I I definitely, I definitely completely wholeheartedly agree with that. So best of luck. Who knows when he's going to show up next? Uh, it should be very interesting times. And hopefully AEW, if he remains with the company, uh, utilizes him in, in a way that's beneficial to the company at, at large. 
Uh, now we're going to go to a new segment, or one of my favorite segments. This is the third time we're doing this segment, and it's called K. Okay, now that's what yeah. I call yikes. And, oh, no. And the what subject now? of now that's what I call yikes is the grandest stage of them all, WrestleMania. So. Oh, that's a fucking yikes. <laughs> WrestleMania. <laughs> Two-day combo tickets went on sale last week. I, myself, Sir Charles, and potentially Will, were considering going. I had a number in my mind about what we should spend on combo tickets in order to be able for us to then still successfully fly across the nation to Vegas, get accommodations, so on and so forth, and make it a good time. Well, what would have a realistic budget for that trip have looked like? A realistic budget? Well, I have my parents. For normal people. Oh, for normal like, people, not people with connections like myself. Okay. No, <laughs> not like normal people. Oof. I would probably say mm, between three and five grand, I'm assuming. Jesus Christ. That's, that's, that is just an assumption. You know, so much money. Okay, so so all right, so combo tickets went on sale, and I decided that I was going to be on the pre-sale because that's usually when you buy WrestleMania tickets because that's when they don't hit the secondary market and they're usually the cheapest. And then I discovered that the cheapest tickets during the pre-sale were in the nosebleeds, obviously, but they were six hundred dollars mind really you nosebleeds? yes mind you ladies and gentlemen i paid roughly around six hundred dollars per ticket for my club seats in philly this year so I, that's crazy so i was like huh little pricey little odd and i was like okay i'm not gonna send the nosebleeds at mania i'm not that type of person who just wants to be there i know people i know wrestling fans who are like oh i just want to be there and be in the thing and i have a good time not me i've sat up in nosebleeds never will do it again especially in barclays it fucking sucks oh <laughs> i was at we were at the second to last row at barclays that's where i was out. that's where i was for sasha bailey one sasha bailey one that's where I was for Raw After Mania 2019. I forgot how fucking high up it was. I was so scared. Yeah, it's because it's steep at the, in the top of Barclays. It's very steep. Oh, I ate an edible. I ate an edible about 45 <laughs> minutes before walking into Barclays because they're so crazy with vapes and shit. Yeah. So like, I didn't even. I didn't bring anything with me. I smoked a joint on my way in and hit ate an edible. So I was like fucked up. I'm like I'm on top of the world. Yeah. So anywho, folks. So we. So I went into this thing I had priced out of oh, Mania, not going to go. SummerSlam's coming to New York City anyways. So then I got curious because people, a lot of people were talking about these higher prices for, for, for Mania in Vegas. And they could Mania, entertainment capital, very expensive, blah, blah, blah. I, like, I get it. And then I noticed, and a lot of people, a lot of other people noticed and reported that the next day of the pre-sale, the ticket prices doubled or tripled in certain instances. Wait, what? Oh, that I didn't know. Yes. Okay. I explained this in our oh, Discord. No. So and so people were like the Discord that cover to cover all That's time. fine. I, I never do I that's why I have my notifications on my phone turned off and I only answer it when I like I remember it. <laughs> um what's I probably takes off some people who try to get in contact with me and tag me and stuff, but whatever. I'm the same way. <laughs> it's no shade to anyone. It's just too much noise for me. <laughs> That's what it like. Cause here's the thing. Like I love our, I love all of our discord people. Most of them are watching the show, but sometimes when you guys get to talking, I don't want my phone going off or my wrist going off. Cause I have a smartwatch every like two seconds. Me too. <laughs> so I'm like, I gotta meet you guys. And just when check I'm at it. work, especially I'm like, I can't. can't <laughs> <laughs> Anywho. So I noticed that we, a lot of people notice that these prices Double yet yeah, triple. Currently, I checked a couple of hours ago. Those same nosebleeds are going for like eleven hundred, twelve hundred. Like the lowest price I saw was about no eight hundred. So here's what I discovered. Okay, um, this is not this is not fully a WWE thing. This is a Ticketmaster thing. So Ticketmaster uses what is known as a dynamic pricing model. This is something that has got them. Mm-hmm. In potential trouble in the UK and in Europe because an Oasis concert debacle. So what the dynamic pricing model does 
it allows Ticketmaster to fluctuate the price of the ticket for an event based on the demand for that event. So if there's higher demand, the prices will skyrocket. And since WrestleMania essentially was at a time the poor man's Super Bowl, the prices shot up ridiculously. You can look on social media and see the prices people paid for WrestleMania this year. It is absolutely bonkers. Absolutely bonkers. It is so high that you can probably yeah. mathematically get a better price for WrestleMania by going through on location. WWE's like premium, like premium live event experience, like a uh, company that they use. Mm-hmm. You can almost mathematically get a better price there instead of using Ticketmaster. I hate Ticketmaster. Like truly, you know, um, and this is concerning because WWE and many other arenas, companies, primarily use Ticketmaster. Ticketmaster essentially has a monopoly on every on anything tickets sold. You know, SeatGeek for a while. Uh, the one time WWE did not use Ticketmaster was WrestleMania 38 because all the tickets went through SeatGeek. And that was a lot much better experience and also cheaper, too. I was able to pay for me and someone else to go with uh, to Dallas, mm-hmm. you know. Um, but I don't know. I don't know if this is a trend. A lot of people have voiced a lot of concern about every, them getting priced out. Like, I call the poor man's or called WrestleMania the poor man's Super Bowl because, like, it's an event that was reasonably feasible for many common mm-hmm. people. Like, if you look at the Super Bowl, the Super Bowl is essentially a private event. You have to know somebody to get yeah. a ticket to the Super Bowl. Like it's it's there's no way you get into the Super Bowl as a common person. You know, yeah. but WWE WrestleMania was never like this. And also being two days, being in stadiums, usually the price was would, you know, go down, but Ticketmaster kind of stopped doing that. And this is this is price gouging at an absorb at like an exuberant level. And I don't know what you do to stop it. There has to be some sort of intervention, but but yeah, okay, if you look at Ticketmaster right now, okay, if you really want to, I don't advise you to do that because you'll scare oh, I, yourself. Oh, I'm gonna. <laughs> you know, um, the prices are still ridiculously high. So, so that that's all I have on that. But it's just, it's mind blowing. I don't know if I'll ever be able to go to another WrestleMania unless it's in the Northeast. With all these that's prices, what I'm saying like, uh, if it, I don't want it to continue this way because like I want to go to WrestleMania again in the future. And I, well, the best thing about WrestleMania I, is traveling to different cities for WrestleMania. Yeah, like I, the only WrestleMania I've been to is New York. the New Jersey WrestleMania. Yeah. yeah, like I want to go to WrestleMania. I like traveling a lot. Yeah, you would have like loved you would have loved so Philly much. with us, Kay. I know, but I had a I great know. road trip. All like five of us <laughs> packing in my car. I know, <laughs> I know. Philly would have been great. We got a pop. It's I I, I get it. A, unusual of activity on my browser. Ooh, that's real. Why is it yelling at me trying to look at ticket at WrestleMania tickets? It was it's weird. It's very weird. I can look it up right now for you to see what the prices are. Oh no, I I turned my Wi-Fi off to see if that worked. Oh yeah, and now it's just not loading. <sighs> I'll pull it up for you right now. Oh, I got it. It's loaded. Are you sure you? Um, what are we looking at? Oh my god, the ch- the cheapest ticket I found is nine hundred dollars. Yep, that's in section four hundred and thirty four. That's at the top of the stadium, folks. That's fucking craziness. Mm-hmm. That was quite literally the top row. Um. Okay, let's see if I wanted one ticket. If I just went alone and abandoned my whole family, <laughs> what would happen? Please adjust my search. Okay, so you can't buy one ticket. You have to buy at least two. Yo, these people are fucked up. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so now that I'm like looking, like those tickets already disappeared. And now the cheapest ticket I found is in section 138 for $1,835. Jesus. Like, that's a month of rent. For real. Yeah, and somebody posted 
the um somebody posted what the price plan was because WD usually would post it or it leaks somewhere and it's nothing that you can find on Ticketmaster they're exponentially cheaper than what WWE posts and this is all to to Ticketmaster's um you know dynamic pricing model which is an absolute disaster <laughs> yeah I like I hope in the future they don't go with Ticketmaster as who does the ticketing yeah because re- this is an absolute disaster. Like, is WrestleMania going to sell out? On probably, you know. I I low key hope it doesn't. I kind of hope it doesn't do the kind of show. And some of this, common folk like us will never be able to get to a WrestleMania again. And that's that's a very unfortunate thing, because, you know, wrestling. You know, I love seeing regular people at sporting events or you know wrestling events because it made it that much more fun. I don't want it to go the way of a Super Bowl where it becomes like, you know, it's just you have to be a celebrity or a big name person just to even get tickets to this thing. I can't get over how much money it is. Even like we looked up World Series tickets just out of curiosity. Even though it's like, oh, well, the World Series already like, got priced out like as soon as the matchup got announced. Yeah. 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 So very expensive. It, it, it sucks. So yeah, WrestleMania uh, will be in your house. It'll be from our houses <laughs> um, yeah. this year. Uh, so if anyone wants to come over or something, we we can definitely do something and, and figure that out. Uh, moving on to this, unfortunately, last week we had to see the end of one of the greatest announcers ever in the history of pro wrestling, Samantha Irvin, that darling that she is, announced um, last Monday. That she was that her that Raw was going to be her last show and that she is leaving the company, which made everybody really shocked. There was a lot of speculation going around about why she was leaving, uh, where she might be going, uh, obviously, because her husband, I blink there. I think they're married now. Husband or fiance. I think. Yeah. Ricochet is uh, left for AEW several months ago, showed up at All In um, and. You know, there was a thought that maybe she's also going to AEW. Ricochet immediately uh, said, no, that's not what she's doing. Do not worry (laughs) Um, about that. Uh, There was a lot of speculation, like, is she going to follow her fiance? Does she miss her fiance? And the very misogynistic comments that people made. Um, Yeah, that's gross. So she she did come out the other day and said uh, some pretty interesting stuff. It was that although she was an announcer... She wanted to be more than an announcer. She wanted she used being an announcer as the way to get in. She wanted to be a manager. She wanted to work her way to being more of an on-screen character um, mm-hmm. than what she was because she is a fan of wrestling. She's also ridiculously talented. You've seen her on America's Got Talent. That's where they found her. <laughs> um, you know. However, uh, WWE felt that she WWE gave her a glass ceiling. That she wasn't going to break through. They only saw her as an announcer. And I don't blame them because she was a damn good announcer. When Bruce Buffer and Michael Buffer are giving you compliments, like, you're really good at your job. Um, And they didn't see her going farther than that. And she wanted to do more with her career. And so she decided to leave, realizing that she wasn't going to go anywhere. Uh, She decided that she wanted to pursue a different avenue. And this is something that she came out and said. This is something that they had WWE had been known about for months. This wasn't something that was a spur of the moment thing. We just found out about it, but WWE was well aware of it. The other big thing that that came out from her own personal social media is that she didn't like being an announcer. It's so crazy how like how often people are good at things that they actually don't like doing. She did not like being an announcer at all. She said she did the different gimmicks or different ways of announcing people's names as a way to make it fun for her. Ironically, it was a it was something that endeared us to her all the time because she was creative, but she did it out of necessity because she didn't like to do it. That's valid. <laughs> um you know, and I get it. She she had to make it fun. She made chicken salad out of chicken shit. Uh, you know, she's moving on to other avenues. And it it sucks because she probably has the most iconic announcement in WrestleMania history after Cody winning. Yeah. You know, I mean, Grant, like, she hated the job. She didn't like being an announcer. But it, she nev- you could have never figured it out 
whenever you oh wait you there might it. be hope for the yankees oh my god take it easy it's only one game <laughs> 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 so so what are your thoughts on samantha urban leaving kayfabe um i'm very bummed about it i really enjoyed listening to her every monday um and i hope she gets to wherever she ends up next i hope she gets to do the things she actually wants to do instead of being forced into a role that isn't her vibe. Yeah, it's a big loss yeah. for WWE. Huge. Very, very huge loss, but WWE always surprises us because taking Samantha Irvin's place in a very immediate seat back on a full-time basis, Lillian Garcia. Is I was shocked. We all were. <laughs> Lillian Garcia now the returning as the voice of Raw on a full time basis shocked the world. And when I first found out Lillian was coming back on a full time basis, like this seems really fishy. Like my conspiracy theory, like my tinfoil it hat. Weird. I was like, really? I was like, you're you're like you, you Sam's leaving, and Lillian Garcia is just right there. However, if WWE had time to really think about this and negotiate with Lillian, then it makes a lot more sense. I find it interesting that they went with Lillian instead of trying to establish. Yeah, they, a new they put they put Mike Rome. They's like Mike Rome, you stay in NXT. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. They could have brought Mike Rome up. They could have brought Mike Rome back. Yeah, but they didn't like stay there. <laughs> that, that is a good question. How much money did they throw at Lillian? I don't know because I thought Lillian Garcia was done. Done. But now she's Me too. she's back on the road. I've always met Lily, and I know Will has. Uh, she she's apparently a huge I sweetheart. Know. She did have her own podcast on the network for a while. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, because there was a there was a big episode with Shotzi when Shotzi was talking about her mm-hmm. history as a um his growing up. Uh that that really like endeared a lot of people to Shotzi. Because of some of the things scored. Like, Thank God. <laughs> Two one. Okay, close enough. So Lillian Garcia is back. Sam Samantha Urban's gone. Who knows where she's going to pop up? Caleb Becker is supposed to be being in a movie soon, or Caleb Braxton formerly. Mm-hmm. Uh, Samantha Urban, I think, is going to produce going to going to pursue her music career a little bit more now. Good for her. Um, she's a fantastic singer. Have you ever heard her? You know, I have. Yeah, she's very talented. She's extremely talented, so I feel like she's going to be successful in anything that she does. So moving on from that, WWE decided that they're going to return to the independents um, effective immediately. So I'm going to read to you, Kayfabe, and all of our listeners the press release that was uh, gifted to us by uh, one of our one of our friends, Taquan, uh, that came out today. So it says, <clears throat> "Excuse me." WWE today announced the launch of a first of its kind developmental program designed to provide up and coming independent wrestlers a pathway to a potential career in WWE. The program will be called WWE ID, short for WWE Independent Development. Uh, mm-hmm. Yes. It says following the 2021 launch of WWE's NIL program, which a birth to people like uh, Tiffany Stratton uh, came from NIL um kalani jordan's from nil a lot of your current nxc talent is from the nil classes um is it following wwe's nil program in 2021 idea has been constructed to support independent wrestling prospects and wrestling schools with world-class training development and mentorship under that's really cool gets even gets even more interesting under the program WWE will provide prominent independent wrestling schools with a WWE ID official designation with the goal of providing new trainees and existing talent at these select institutions with enhanced developmental opportunities. Here are the five schools that they've announced. Booker T's Reality of Wrestling in Houston. Cody Rhodes Nightmare Factory in Atlanta. Seth Rollins Black and Brave Academy in Iowa, uh, Elite Pro Wrestling Center in Concord, New Hampshire, and the Knox Pro Academy in Los Angeles are the first WWE ID uh, independent wrestling schools to earn official designation. Additionally, 
WWE ID <laughs> will identify top independent wrestling prospects with an official WWE ID prospect designation and support the developmental journey by providing financial opportunity and assisting with training, mentorship, and development, including access to world-class facilities, best-in-class training, athletic trainers, and more. WWE ID will give fans the opportunity to follow the paths of these standout prospects on the independent wrestling scene through curated behind-the-scenes content, as well as highlights and matches showcased across WWE's social platforms. So that is the new WWE ID. Um, <laughs> WWE Investigation Discovery, Jesus Christ. Um, <laughs> they're not going to, this is an interesting thing. So I have some thoughts on this. Some people are like, this is going to kill the independent scene. And I don't think it is. Um, there was a promoter that came out the other day and was like, I don't want people to work with me for over a year. If you're working with me for over a year and you haven't gotten signed, that means you, we, there's still stuff for you to work on. Like, I want everybody to get signed. And I, I wish more promoters had that <laughs> um, mentality. You know, I get it can be difficult. But also with this, to me, I see this as, a, you know, same cow. Like, like, this is a new coat of paint on the thing that WWE has been doing for fucking years. They're just making it public. You don't think they follow wrestlers and give them opportunities? You haven't been following the story of Zelina Vega, <laughs> you know, or mm -hmm. or other talent where like they will grab talent before they before they went away for a couple of years when they said we're gonna stop doing the indies, we're gonna go to do NIL exclusively, which what they did to pretty good success. If you've seen the talent on NXT, they've done really well with that. Um they were following independent wrestlers. They would bring them for trials. Shotzi got invited to the performance center like eight times before they signed her. Yeah. You know, I was just thinking about her. That's so crazy. Yeah. You said that. Shotzi, Zelina Vega has the same story. Like they, there are people that they have been following and that they kind of like when they're ready to bring them in there. This is just being more public about it and being mm -hmm. more, um, kind of being more organized about it. This is no different than when WWE had OVW. You know, or FCW. Mm -hmm. Same thing. They're allowing them to be on the independent circuit. You're just going to get followed a little bit more. I see this more as the WWE ID designation is like being something. <laughs> Even Christopher Daniels had tryouts. Eddie Kingston had tryouts on, on for WWE Performance Center. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, they know who these people are. MGF, I think, had a tryout at some point. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's not like they don't know who the top independent people are. Why do you think they brought Regal back? Regal just, Regal's whole job the first time around was just l running the indies and finding people. JBL is doing that right now with TNA. <laughs> you know? Um, but the WWE ID designation is going to be interesting. It's like, it's like saying you're a fellow of something like in academic purposes or like you graduate from a school. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's a resume booster. I see it as. I agree with you. You know, I just have, I have concerns that like the schools might like, do, do we think they're like tuition or anything would go up? I don't know. I don't know. Financially, like you would think with the in increased brand recognition. Yes. However, mm -hmm. Uh, three out of the five schools are from WWE active talent or Hall of Famers. Mm -hmm. And I could understand, like, Seth's been running that school for a while. Cody's been running a Nightmare Factory forever. Shane Cargill came from a Nightmare Factory, <laughs> you know? Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. Shane Cargill came from the Nightmare Factory. Um, with three, and like, so I don't see, I don't foresee them upping their prices because all of these schools are successful before WWE. Like Booker mm -hmm. T runs re reality of wrestling is not just a school. It's a, like it's a show. Roxanne Perez came from reality of wrestling before she went to ring of honor. Oh, I didn't know that either. Yeah. Um, uh, Nate Frazier who's on NXT right now came from Seth Rollins, black and brave or black and bold or whatever it's called. Black and Brave, I think. Yeah, it is. Black and Brave. That's why he has Seth Rollins' move set a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, so like these are schools that have already been known to produce people. They're just mm -hmm. getting like an official WWE ID designation. What I failed to realize, and I was like, when I read it through the first time, the I thought that they were just going to give these people that they were going to follow 
the WWID tag and not really highlight them. But the fact that they're going to now be highlighted on throughout their journey to potentially get into WWE with like matches and social media, that brings a whole new facet to this whole operation. Yeah, for sure. Oh, Knox Pro is Rikishi. Thank you. There you go. There's another person. Okay. Oh, wow. Knox Pro is Rikishi, um, which is in LA. Uh, so that brings a whole new facet to what they're trying to do because yes, they are WWID talent, which means it's probably going to help the Indies more than it's going to hurt it. So when this program starts to get rolling, you know, these, these wrestlers will have this WWID designation. So their price on the independence will go up. But I feel like since, because this is all on brand recognition, WWE is the biggest brand in pro wrestling because you're going to have talent on the indie scenes with that WWID tag, more people just by default are going to be more inclined to go to these shows, which will expose them to other wrestlers. So I feel like it's going to be, it's going to be an interesting way that everybody's going to benefit from it. Will WWE have a little bit more of a stronghold on this? Yes, absolutely, because they will probably most likely benefit from it all. But I think everybody benefits greater in the long run. Like more people might go to these indie shows. More people will be exposed to different talent. You know, it, it's WWE is always going to be at the top, but they're always they always seem, especially under trips now and the powers that be, to make sure that you still get exposed to other stuff, unless you're an AEW. But that's. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I see this as a pretty interesting thing. I want to see who they find and who and who they're going to follow through their social media and stuff. But also, be it as it may, you now have an equal balance. It's like WWE went away from me, went away from the Indies and did NIL. And now we're like, hey, we're going to bring the Indies back. So now you have two different pathways to potentially find your way into the performance center. You can be signed with NIL. Odyssey Jones got signed and we know what happened to him. And you, but you can also be this <laughs> WWE ID person, but you still have to make it through the PC and NXT. Like this doesn't guarantee mm. anything. It gives you a little bit of a, a leg up. Sure. But I don't think this will actually guarantee you anything in the long run. There are so many talents that went to NXT and didn't do shit. Juice Robinson yeah. was one of them. <laughs> okay. Oh, I forgot about that. Exactly. Cause he was the environmentalist character for a minute. You know, Tyler Breeze wow, almost did him. Tyler Breeze almost got fired in NXT. Yeah. You know, so I guess this is give these people a leg up, but it doesn't guarantee them that they're going to make it. You you still have to. There's still a process. This is just a an easier step per se to get there. But it's interesting. Mm-hmm. It, it's very interesting. What do you think of this, Kay? Does it make you want to go back into wrestling? I, w- I think about going back to wrestling all the time. <laughs> but, like, I know I never could. Like, I physically could never do that again. Yeah. But a younger me would absolutely be putting my face paint back on and trying again. <laughs> I think it's great that there are more pathways for anybody that wants to get into the business, whether they want to be wrestlers or, like, refs mm-hmm. or announcers, what have you, like... We always need wrestlers. And I feel like there isn't there isn't one clear cut way. And there isn't one clear cut way defining success. Hi, Mr. Fred. Hey Fratzy. Um, there's no one clear cut pattern or definition of success in the wrestling business. And I think it's really cool that WWE does not fear the indies anymore. Yeah. And they're rather embracing it and trying to like help it along. Mm-mm. Yeah. Exactly. And I, 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 like I said, I think it's a good thing. This is just going to further the business of wrestling. And it's also, it's some, I, I, it fascinates me. It fascinates me how, as soon as like, like about a month or so ago, we were talking about AEW's media rights deal and how it's really good for business and wrestling and all of that stuff. And it fascinates me about all of a sudden out, out of the blue, WWE's like, we have this now. Like they, they are from a business standpoint. I am so fascinated how they're always like one step ahead of their primary competition. Um, I feel like they, I feel like Triple H probably like ha, ha, is aware of like what people have been saying in the dirt sheets for years. Oh yeah, he has a burner account. About, that's that's for sure. Yeah, so like as the shit people have been saying for years about WWE and the business as a whole, he's aware. And I feel like Tony Khan is not necessarily concerned mm. about that aspect of the business, not trying to make this a Tony versus Trips thing, 
but it's just kind of turned that way. Um, yeah. I feel like Triple H, he has his finger on the pulse of the business. Tony Khan just wants to sign people. Yeah. And play GM mode. <laughs> which is a great mode these days. It, it is one of those things which I have to get back to probably now, but I got WWE 2K24 for free. Um, thanks, PlayStation. Ooh. It's PlayStation Network. Really, I got I got it on the right weekend. <laughs> is is what it That's was. That's good. Um. Oh, that is a great. That is a great question, the Quad. He asks: Since the Nightmare Factory is affiliated uh, with QT Marshall, does that make him a double agent? Because it is Cody and QT that run the Nightmare Factory. That's mm. that's a very interesting question. That's something to really really think about. Um, and I I hope Tony doesn't just like sign people, sign people because at some point this is a saying that we had in Greek life too when I was in college in a past life. Recruitment is the lifeblood of your organization. Yeah, you're always going to have to find new talent. And currently at this moment, and, I, and you know, obviously W has 50 plus years ahead of AEW. AEW is not there. They're trying to build, but at some point, you know, they're entering the fifth, they're past their fifth year or they're in the fifth year. Now you got to start looking at developing some of this younger talent. And I think they're doing a little bit better at it now since I've been watching uh, a little mm-hmm. bit. It, you know, they, there's still things that they got to work on, but you know, I, I hopefully that they get there. Um, at some point, they have too much television time to not develop younger talent. At no, this, for real. At this point, to be completely honest with you, speaking of that, and, and NXT is going to the ECW arena next week, which is wild in and of itself. I know. Oh, yeah, anyhow, I wish I could go. Let's move on to, to, uh, to WWE ID, move on from that. Let's go to what we're really here for, folks, is Crown Jewel. Is, is this weekend probably our last bastion of happiness before Tuesday because you know what Tuesday is in America oh, God. <laughs> you know um, it is I think it was like the eighth or something crown jewel event uh, they're getting close to the 10 year mark I will tell you that because the 10 year contract I was thinking about that the other day yeah I remember when this started oh you weren't on the, how far we are you weren't on the show when we when we had that first conversation mm-hmm. yeah yeah that's that's actually what led to the work yeah. So let and you know how most of the Valkyrie being forever mad at us. <laughs> so, <laughs> Except me. Well, yeah, you didn't directly talk to any of us. I don't think you guys are clever though. I I do commend your cleverness for coming together to try to get us to you know to um to <laughs> to, to, to to figure to like find us in a lie. We were concerned <laughs> <laughs> and calculated. I'll tell you that you knew you knew just you knew just the right people to reach out to each of us to get us yeah. to talk. <laughs> Yo, know, snap the magic of Snapchat, Snapchat group chat back in those days. <laughs> <laughs> Magical. I didn't, I thought it was I literally thought it was through Twitter, but I guess it was through Snapchat. Good job, guys. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of all of you. Yeah. Speaking of Snapchat, who hit me? Uh, well, yeah, I'll answer that later. Um. Anywho, so Crown Jewel coming up this uh, this weekend. It's going to be, I think they've actually nailed the Crown Jewel concept. Finally. <laughs> finally, I'm, finally, this finally. This is the most excited I've ever been for a Crown Jewel. So they took the Survivor Series gimmick of champion versus champion, the all-star game gimmick, and they gave it to Crown Jewel, and they gave it with the with a ridiculously, ridiculously, like, diamond studded jeweled belt like so so big and so gaudy that they have men in white gloves carrying this belt around like it's the stanley freaking cup <laughs> okay it's i like i it. like it i wish they could make a replica they'll probably they probably won't I looked. yeah they probably won't but if they did if they did <laughs> oh you would have it oh yeah for no reason whatsoever. So the first the first thing here is the first ever Crown Jewel Championship match for the men's. The WWE Champion Cody Rhodes versus the WWE World Champion Gunther. These guys have... Um, Cody Rhodes has eliminated Gunther, I think, in the last couple of Rumbles. Um, these guys have history. Uh, their promo work on SmackDown was insane. Cody breaking the fourth wall, being like dramatic. Have you seen my brother? Of course I we're dramatic. This. I was like, did K write this? <laughs> I unfortunately missed this segment on SmackDown wow. because I was waiting for food. Oh, I'm sorry. 
Um, I was hungry. You were hungry. I get it. So the thing with the crown jewel designates in this belt is this person becomes essentially the crown jewel of WWE, the best of the best, not your king of the ring, but the crown jewel. Think of the dynamite diamond ring, but with a purpose outside of MJF. That's how, mm-hmm. that's how I'm saying they hold this designation uh, uh, for, for a year. And, you know, it kind of gets passed around, you know, as a perpetual one-time championship trophy championship belt every year to create its own unique lineage. So uh, it becomes like you become like the ultimate guy for that year. You're a crown jewel of WWE. So like 2024's crown jewel would, could either be Cody Rhodes or Gunther essentially being the quote best of the best. So the big question is, who do you got? Um, I think Gunther's going to win mm. with the help of my dear friend, William Goldberg. <laughs> you, ever since he showed up at Bad Blood, you were like, this is going to happen, isn't it? I'm waiting. You can't do that to me. You can't just tease me with a Bill Goldberg pop-up. I, I, this, like the, the, har- the hard thing it. about this is like, you can't. It's hard to choose this one because, like, Cody's the guy. Like, in all actuality, from a company standpoint, Cody's your top guy, no matter Mm -hmm. what. Like, and he deserves it. Cody's a great face of the company. He's an absolutely brilliant face of the company. Uh, Yes, he is. (laughs) You know, absolutely brilliant face of the company. And Gunther can be that guy. Like, I've seen Gunther out of character on interviews. He's awesome. (laughs) He's awesome to talk to. Um, apparently he loves chocolates. He's still a fat boy at heart. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, so can Cody kind of take a loss for a little bit and start to get ready for a new year and go for being the crown jewel person? I, I kind of think so, because when you look at what's coming up at the end of this, mo- at the end of next month, um, you have Survivor Series War Games and the story's not Cody, you know, at know. this point. Cody, I think, is going to be building to a big match at Rumble. And I agree. You know. But who? Oh, shit. You could be. Oh, shit. No, excuse me. The Yankees. Yes. They had a grand slam. It's 5-2. Jesus fucking Christ. Who hit it? Um, Anthony Volpe. Oh, that's the new Jeter. <laughs> it's the new Jeter. Is that, did I say his name Anthony right? Volpe, yes. I- you're right. So sorry to the Yankees fans listening. No, you're here. fine. You're fine. Every Volpe is fine. You got it <laughs> correct. You got it correct. Wow. Well, their first Grand Slam in a World Series since game one in 1998. Ooh, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. He's he's a little 23 year old. He, they see him as the next cheater. Uh, he's a young. Yeah. He looks. I'm like, he looks young. He's 23. He's from Jersey, I think. He's like a homegrown boy. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, so yeah. So we have. So I, I, I don't think. Come on, Dodgers. Fuck you, frats. <laughs> How are the Blue Jays doing? Oh, get wait. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when, when you look at the grand scheme of Cody and, and Gunther and everything like that, I think Gunther needs this more. Like, Gunther's already a great heel. I think Gunther needs mm-hmm. more. I think you, I think for you, John Cena, Cody a bit. You know, you make Cody look a little weak going into the Rumble and him have to build himself back up so that, you know, he looks really strong going into Mania season. And he might go up against Kevin or Randy. Because remember, we still have the Randy thing mm-hmm. happening. Um, and I and honestly, I think Randy Cody Rumble is perfect. Oh, that's, that's a good match. And I think you build to that. And I think you build to it with uh with the with the Cody law. So I I think Gunther. I think Gunther beats Cody, especially because this isn't a title that's the no real championships on the line. Yeah. This is just recognition. So I'm going to go with you. Yeah, here. I feel like, yeah, Cody doesn't need the win here. Yeah, he, he doesn't at all. Um, so, yeah, let's move on to probably the more interesting matchup, the Crown Jewel Women's Championship, Queen Nia Jax, the Queen of the Ring, versus... Jersey's finest, Liv Morgan, who essentially is just being a Jersey girl on TV, and it's freaking hysterical. Um, for that, they will get their own also crown jewel championship belt. They have shown it off before. It's in white. I think it's a white belt, a white strap. 
instead I don't of black. Remember, actually. I think it's a white chapter. They're having a face up on SmackDown, which Kay may or may not have seen. <laughs> um, <laughs> this, um, uh, did you? Yes, I did see it. I did. Okay. Um, so I mean, this is the build that the biggest story surrounding Liv Morgan and, and Kayfabe. I'm uh, not Kayfabe. Sorry, Liv Morgan and Nia Jax. Sorry, you don't have a you don't have a rivalry. With, I don't have a title yet. Not a title Sorry, yet. Y'all. So the big thing surrounding this is Nia's treatment of Tiffany Stratton. You know, mm-hmm. Tiffany's kind of been put on the sidelines. She got replaced by Candice LeRae for a couple for like a week, and also Tiffy's been fucking up. It's <laughs> trying to like cash mm-hmm. in, trying to not cash in. Naya like literally like choked her on SmackDown a couple weeks ago. <laughs> if you saw that backstage segment, I did. Yeah, which is also if you saw Tiffy's face, I was like, hold on a second. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, so so the big thing is, how does this go down? I think. Here's what I think. I think Tiffy cost Nia this match. Oh, a thousand percent. Because without a doubt. You create you create that controversy. And at some point Tiffy is going to cash in on Nia. I don't think you do it in Saudi Arabia because it doesn't make sense because it's for a number title. It's not for this. You know, it's not for Nia's championship. But I think by Rumble, Tiffy's costing Nia the, the, the championship. Um well, and I think it benefits Liv more because Liv is like you can't. People can't stand Liv and Dom now. Now Liv has two belts. Mm-hmm. She'll be insufferable. <laughs> yeah, and that's the energy that we want. Exactly. I could. I wondered about this. We were talking about this the other day mm-hmm. about could even though I know that this tech this is not for the WWE like the championship. It's for the crown jewel thing. Couldn't Tiffy still cash in anyway? You know, I I don't know. Um, like, okay, so like, let's say she let's, caught, let, let's talk this, match, yeah, let's right? talk this out. Okay, so she caught, like, she fucks the matchup for Nia, and Nia is like fucked up, right? Yeah. She sees Nia in a vulnerable state and then realizes she can cash in. Can she just cash in then? And then the they ring the bell and start a match? Yes, she could, but that means l- I know it's. That means Liv could also years. win too. So you're you're, you're talking yeah, a match within a I'm, match. Yes. Like Liv win, and but have not but have Tiffy cash in after. Oh, okay. Do you know what I, I mean? I see what like, you mean. So like, so the match actually happens, and then Tiffy cashes in after the match. Yes. Okay. That's what I mean. Sorry, I'm not explaining it right. Like the way I like envisioning it in my head. Is that Tiffy comes out to help Naya in some way, and she ends up fucking it up, whether it's on accident or on purpose, we don't know. Mm -hmm. But she fucks the matchup for Naya, and Naya gets like hurt, or always like weakened. Like she's she's fucking she's blown up after the match, and then Tiffy can realize and see, oh shit, Naya's blown up. Mm. This is my opportunity, and she's gonna do the whole look at the briefcase and be like, <laughs> "Should I?" And the crowd's gonna go all in, and they're gonna hype her up, and then she's gonna cash in. I don't necessarily think she'll have a successful cash in when she cashes yeah. in. Yeah, but I think it's possible it could happen at Crown Jewel. It could happen. It's a weird take, but if it's if I'm right, I will be very smug about I'm it. I'm more enter- <laughs> I, I get. I'm more entertained by Tiffy failing the cash in because she plays. She plays a really good dumb blonde. Yeah. <laughs> she plays a really good dumb blonde. Um, and she like they they play that up a lot with her. Uh Sir Charles is saying Naya wins, but still only leaves with one belt. Which is a, again, Naya could actually win and Tiffy cash in after Naya wins. Mm-hmm. And everybody leaves with a belt. It's also a possibility. I don't think that's gonna happen, but it's a I think that's more plausible than Tiffy just straight cashing in. Mm-hmm. It'd be an interesting take. Be a very, very interesting take. Uh, but I'm still gonna go with live winning. And I I, I don't know what Tiffy Cat like I want I think Tiffy Cash again would be uh left for like a bigger stage, like the rumble. Tiffy Cash is in at the rumble. Not at the not during the match, because that would be very unique. But Tiffy Cashing mm-hmm. in at, at the Rumble, I think, is a bigger stage because like they want to make her a star. So cat her have her cash in Do and we think Jewel? there's do we think we're saving Tiffy for Charlotte Flair? 
At this point, absolutely. Charlotte's coming back by the Rumble. She has to be. So Charlotte's going to come back in the Rumble. I, Got it. I can almost guarantee that. Charlotte's been ready. Tiff, yeah. Tiffy Charlotte at Mana, yeah. Blonde versus Blondie. Yeah, it's a Vince McMahon classic. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. <laughs> it is. Um, yeah, Tiffy Charlotte Mania is a p- high possibility. So Tiffy Cash again at the Rumble, going on that run of it and being like, oh, you have to beat Charlotte at Mania, which she'll mm-hmm. lose to Charlotte at Mania. <laughs> oh, Obviously. Yeah. But like she'll have a she'll have a good, you know, run with it, but we'll see what happens. So moving on to non-championship match, and then what might actually still be the main event, it's a preview of war games with only three members on each side. So we have Bloodline. Versus Bloodline 2.0, Roman and the Usos, the original Bloodline crew, versus uh, Solo, maybe, and Solo and a mixture of two of these three people, Tonga Loa, Tom and Tonga, and or Jacob Fatu. That's what, the, that's what it looks like right now. There was a thing on Raw where good old white savior Sami Zayn got into the mix again. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. It's white Sammy yeah. Sammy. <laughs> like, I love Sammy yeah. to death, but stop, man. <laughs> stop, Sammy. <laughs> um. So this is, this is officially a six-man tag designation. This is leading to war games clearly. And obviously, Sammy's going to be a part of war games. I think they've made that clear. How they do that, I don't know, because there's a lot of swerving that happened on on raw with this but the question is who wins this match okay i actually i have another crazy take okay i i want to hear this what do you got i've been feeling i don't know i'm feeling very inspired by wrestling i'm booking shit again um so i think that new bloodline is winning um but i think that sometime between crown jewel and the rumble i think that um jacob fatu is turning on solo and kicking solo out of the uh, bloodline and solo is gonna have to crawl back to roman's bloodline kind of with his tail Mm -hmm. between his legs and then they bring in another a new fourth i think either zilla fatu or isn't there another tongan brother out there somewhere Somewhere, yeah zilla fatu really nice person met him at comic-con they could bring in one of those guys and they could do the true OG bloodline mm-hmm. versus Jacob Fatu's bloodline, which is all the Tongans and him. Yeah. Zill, by the way, Zilla Fatu is just as big as the rest of those guys. Like he's a big dude. He actually had a real cyber. He had a really funny story. We were talking to him at Comic-Con, which by the way, he introduced himself to like myself and my friend Sam, which blew my mind. Oh, really? Yeah. He was there with Rikishi um, and stuff. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> you know, uh, and he's he talked about how when he was learning to wrestle, he didn't realize how he didn't know how to run the ropes. And he's like, he goes, there's a way you have to hit the ropes. He goes, and I didn't hit that way. He goes, the first time he ran the ropes, he fell off the ring. Oh, my God. Because <laughs> he toppled over. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, <laughs> But like outside of his car, it seemed like a really cool jerk. I wish I wish him all the best. Uh, I, I kind of agree with you. I think you because like WWE's on a roll right now with making Bloodline 2.0 like the most hated thing in wrestling mm-hmm. <laughs> at the moment. Um, you know, Solo's got a little bit more of a bravado with him. He's not as brooding and menacing now. Jacob Fatu cracks me up all the time. He's me. I me too. He clearly I is playing like- Paul Heyman. <laughs> like I don't like new bloodline. I love Jacob, Jacob Fatu's amazing. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. And so I, I think you got to kind of, you got to kind of make Roman and Jimmy and Jay look weak. Jimmy's taking this pin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, that's fine. Yeah. Jimmy's taking this pin, which will lead into war games. And that's how you bring in Sammy because there's literally no one else to bring in <laughs> right mm-hmm. now. This could lead to the return of Paul Heyman. I've been saying that for weeks. I thought that he could come back in Brooklyn, but then he mild spoiler for ne- for Friday SmackDown. He did not show up. <laughs> he could show up on NXT next week at the ECW arena. 
Oh, that would be sick. They, are, they already booked Dawn Marie. Did they? Dawn Marie is going to be a special guest referee in a women's match. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Um, see, I, I, I think Bloodline 2.0 beats original Bloodline. It's going to be yeah. a wild, chaotic thing, but I think it's going to, they're going to beat original Bloodline. OG Bloodline doesn't have a sturdy enough foundation to win a match. Yeah, they, they still kind of all hate each other. <laughs> yeah. They don't trust each other. Exactly. And I mean, can you blame them? <laughs> oh. No, not at all. Yeah. Expect the Quan Marie username. Yes, I will to Quan. I love how Taquan <laughs> always changes his username on Discord. Literally the best usernames on Discord. <laughs> it's good. It's very good. So moving on from the Bloodline match, we have Randy versus Kevin. So RKO versus KO. Um in what was in the makings of what was a ridiculous angle on SmackDown where you had, I don't know if you saw the playback of it. Randy called out triple H. They had a camera of triple H in gorilla. Oh, really? Yeah. So on the live, on the live show or, but not so live show for SmackDown. They, yeah, I was very confused Yeah, on the not so live show with SmackDown. Randy comes out to the ring. He calls out triple H and there's a, there's a, there's a camera in gorilla. Of Triple H's like not want to do it, not want to do it, not want to do it. And then someone into the, someone hits his music and he like gives out a like <laughs> he, he, he has a very visible sigh and like takes off his headphones <laughs> and oh. walks out. <laughs> I think the winner of this match goes up against Cody at the Rumble. Yes. Absolutely. And I think I think Randy Cody at the Rumble is perfect. I agree for this. I love KO to death. I think KO is just kind of a, a, he's just a stepping stone to Randy and Cody. They've been kind of teasing Randy and Cody for a very, very long time. I think this is going to happen. Plus the loss also will help with Kevin's like healness. That's Mm -hmm. coming. I mean, I can also see Randy, Kevin, Cody, triple threat. I don't, but I think that's too much. I agree. Not everything needs to be a triple threat. Yeah, I think I think Randy Cody. So I think Randy beats Kevin, especially especially when Triple H was like, "I'm trying to protect, Ke- I'm trying to protect you from Kevin." Yeah, like Triple H having no faith in Randy. Which did you watch that segment live? No, I was again online. <laughs> you were really hungry. <laughs> Well, no, it was between getting into the venue, like that line, and then the food line. Oh yeah, Liv got merch. Like, so I missed a bunch of se- like segments. I, the only wrestling that I know for <laughs> sure that I missed was the best of seven. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, and I was in my seat by like a little after eight. Okay, I, it, it it happens, I guess. It very much. Yeah. So we're both in agreement. Randy's winning this whole thing. Yeah. yeah, moving on to this. I'm uh, moving on to what's probably going to steal the show. Thick boy Bronson Reed versus Ooh. Seth freaking Rollins. These guys want to kill each other. Seth curb stomped him on a on the hood of a car on Raw. Yeah, it was so good. <laughs> and then Bronson Reed got up and gave him a Death Valley driver off of a production truck into a bed of tables. Yeah. Like these guys are going to destroy each other. Uh, it was giving Roman Reigns Nassau Coliseum ambulance. <laughs> that was such a great time. <laughs> my that was my very first WWE event. That was so good. Um, oh man, yeah, these guys are going to kill each other. It's going to be great. My big question here is, I don't really care who wins. Seth going back on vacation. How many tsunamis does Seth get? Um, four. So the first time he did was six. Um, yeah, I feel like if we do more now, I feel like it's just gonna be like overkill. Potentially. Uh, so it's funny that, uh, Bronson Reed was on Chris Van Vliet, who has a great, he was a great interviewer for all these wrestling talents lately. Mm-hmm. Apparently Bronson Reed revealed like he wasn't supposed to do six. <laughs> <laughs> he just kept going. <laughs> like it was an ad lib for him to keep doing more. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is, which, hey, that's that's great timing because sometimes you got to go off script a little. Yeah. And then they sold it really well. 
I don't know. Seth is really good at getting people over. Like, look what he did for Cody. <laughs> That's what I was thinking, too. Like, Seth does not need this win in any way. No. Seth, the diva who wore two jackets of the same color on Raw. You saw that bullshit, right? Oh, we did. <laughs> Literally during that segment, that's how we decided we're being Seth and Becky for Halloween. <laughs> who's Seth and who's Becky? Liv is Seth, I'm Becky, and Boris is being The Undertaker. <laughs> you guys are ridiculous. <laughs> Liv has the hair. Ah, gotcha. Liv literally has the Seth hair. And Becky, I'm just going to throw on an orange wig, and I have, like, black. There you go. It works out. See, I, I'm i going to go with Bronson. I want Bronson to win this, to be honest with you. Seth doesn't need this win right now. Seth can be going on to something bigger at Mania. You know, CM Punk. <laughs> We're getting oh, Seth yeah. CM Punk at oh, yeah. Mania. Oh, my God. I can't wait for Seth and Punk. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's going to be great. So, yeah, I, I think Bronson Reed takes this. Seth's going to give him a fantastic match. Now that they're I both agree. healthy. Yeah. Seth, Seth and Punk and Mania may not yeah. be for the title, which would be unfortunate. Yeah, I've been thinking about that for a while because I desperately feel like that should be a title match, but I don't know how either of them are going to get to the title. Like, yeah, how do you take the title off no. of Gunther? You don't. So. <laughs> yeah, that, that that's the big issue. So yeah, I, I unless Gunther happens, God forbid, I don't want this to happen, but God forbid Gunther is like injured for real yeah. for a mania time and has to like drop i don't see him dropping unless he is forced to yeah and goofer deserves a main event at this point he's doing unbelievable yeah. work absolutely unbelievable work give him night one main event mm-hmm. um yeah or or an, either main event or an opener he deserves that accolade for for the stuff that he's done in the last like three to four years um but moving on from that Speaking of best of seven, we have a triple threat match for the United States Championship. So, obviously, the game seven was going to be Carmelo Hayes versus Andrade. It was going well, but LA Knight became, uh, ooh, that's a good that's a good point to Quan. Gunther could get the Cena match. That would be excellent. Uh, oh, I think Gunther is a thousand percent getting the Cena match. Um, so, but LA Knight was the guest referee for this game seven or, the you know, best of seven match seven. And LA Knight, obviously, with his ego kind of ruined it for everybody. So Nick Aldis was like, you're getting a triple threat match at crown jewel. This is interesting because LA Knight has the U S title. He beat Logan Paul for it. He got his moment. He did his stuff. I think it's time to get that belt off of LA Knight. I think it's Carmel Hayes's time. I believe so as well. Uh, I think for a couple of things, number one, look what they've, done for uh Braun Breaker. Mm-hmm. And the equivalent of Braun Breaker was Carmelo Hayes. Yeah. You know, Carmelo Hayes was a first round draft pick uh for SmackDown. Andrade and him have put on some damn good matches. Like they yeah. they like it's so weird. Best of sevens just work sometimes, whether you intend to do it or not. Like the first best of seven I remember, Sheamus and Cesaro. I that's the old that's the one I always think yeah. of. Did wonders. I think this is wonders. And I think Mello, um, I think Mello needs this US title to elevate him. I I'd be mm-hmm. so happy for him. Um, obviously, because since we interviewed him before he went to WWE, not interview, we sponsored his last match. Mm-hmm. I interviewed him. My apologies. We sponsored his last match before he went to WWE. So I'm very happy for that. So I think, yeah, Mello shoots he doesn't miss. I think you really build up this mellow thing um especially him being like a super heel now even a cockier heel now but he has the belt um all for trick williams to show up at the rumble yes <laughs> oh my god please now i'm assuming you did not watch halloween have it okay not yet i want to though this week Can, is it worth watching I think so yes um especially for all the wrestlers who cosplayed in different stuff that's why i like watching the Halloween Havocs. I usually try to watch them even if I don't really catch up on NXT. Yeah. I did say, did you wait? Never what? mind. In case this was a Friday. Never mind. We'll talk about this next okay. week <laughs> because there's something I noticed on SmackDown on Friday, but now I don't remember if it happened on this week's taping or it's gonna happen on Friday. Okay. But there's an outfit I want there is an outfit I want to talk to you about. All right, yeah. You'll you'll know it when you see it. I I I probably will. I will say the the best mm-hmm. Trick Williams had a great cosplay because they were in Hershey, Pennsylvania. 
Mm-hmm. So Trick came out in a brown top hat and a purple vest and was like Willy Wonka. He called himself Trick Willy Wonka. K for his oh entrance. God, he, he had he had the white gloves. He had the cane. K. He even did the roll oh. <laughs> as part of its entrance. Wow. <laughs> I love Willy Wonka, so wow, that makes me very excited. Yeah, Roxanne and Cora Jade came out as the twins from The Shining. Cute, very cute. Stephanie Vaquer and Gulia were just them. Stephanie Vaquer is becoming, it's quickly becoming a favorite of mine. Really? Oh, wait, that's that's my favorite match of that, of that event, was the women's I've been hat. watching NXT a little bit, but like not every week. Yeah. Again, I, I was consistent and then baseball happened. CW app. <laughs> The yeah. CW app, it's free on that. But yeah, for this one, I think I think it's I think it's Mello's time. Give him yeah. the title, let him run with it, let him run through the mid card, build him up in kind of a semi low going into the end of the year. We'll see what happens when he has the belt. Moving on to this, and also this is probably the most women that we're ever going to have in a match in Saudi Arabia ever. Remember, we only had one women's match. We now have two, and we now yep. have ten women competing. In Crown Jewel. This is called progress, folks. Yeah. Okay. The- <laughs> it really is. I was shocked when they announced yeah. this. Um, I, I loved also having, whoops, that's Will. I love love also having um all of the GMs in one, in one segment. Being mm-hmm. like, we came together because it made sense. You have NXT, SmackDown, and Raw represented on a cross-promotional title, which is the only one that's a cross-promotional title is funny to quote um, is is the women's tag championship so you have bianca and jade going up against chelsea green and piper niven going up against damage control eo uh eo sky and Kyrie sane going up against nxt's metaphor uh representing by lash legend and miss jakara jackson who i've seen jakara jackson in person and my lord almighty um i'll just say that this has been a very interesting build especially because when Last Legend and Jakar Jackson had a tag match on SmackDown against Jade and Bianca, it got preempted by another storyline. And a lot of people were ticked about that. A lot of people, because it was their debut, and then they got interrupted by, I think, something going on. With, Kevin Owens interrupted them mid-entrance mm-hmm. um, to, you know, say his thing. And then they had the match. And you can see visibly that Bianca and Jade were even pissed about how that segment went on like on air and on TV. So a lot of people were ticked about that. Um, but to their credit, they have started to use them. Rhea got jumped. Oh, oh, that's interesting. Thank you, Taquan. Um to a lot of their credit, they kept Last Legend Jakar on. They've had a bunch more matches. They're really fun if you've ever seen them. Have you seen Metaphor K at all? Literally never in my They're life. No I Dars was so confused. Oh. Yeah, Noam Dar's been injured for a while. Uh, but their entrance is really cool. They have like a Power Ranger engine. So like they'll pose in the dark and then like a streak of color will go and they'll show a silhouette. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. So it, it's really cool. Last Legend, I'll give you a little bit of history of Last Legend. Last Legend was a former WNBA player. She is also dating in real life Trick Williams. Oh wow. Yeah. They've actually had a couple they they let them do a couple like flirtatious spots on NXT. It's oh, really cute. cute. Uh, Jakara Jackson, which I found out because me and Charles looked her up. She's from Albuquerque, New Mexico. There's not really there's oh, wow. not really much history outside of her for that. <laughs> <laughs> She's like a, a unicorn. I was like, you're from New Mexico. Uh, but she is uber athletic, uber talented. Um, I'm just happy to see all of them, clo- especially NXT getting represented with Chelsea and Kyrie and EO. And like, this is going to be a fun match. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm very excited. You know, see all these women. Yeah, I'm very. I don't know who's going to win this. Like, I could see Bianca and Jade winning. I can also see Bianca and Jade losing. Me due too. To all of, like the I chaos it, going on. I think if Jade and Bianca lose, I think it could start the beginning of the Jade and Bianca split. It's possible. They've had they've had a long enough time. I would love to see. These women's tag titles go to Lash and and Jakara Jackson. Um, they that would be so nice. But also, they've been highlighting them a lot more. Like they popped up on almost every show for the past like three weeks. 
So like you're yeah. clearly doing something with them. Lash Legend also was a very big internet viral fame for a while. She on an episode of NXT when Alpha Academy was down there, she body slammed Otis. <laughs> Not like with ease though. Like picked him up and slammed him. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Like she 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 is a great preacher powerhouse. Jakara Jackson, uber athletic. So like my my I'm gonna go with my heart here. I'm gonna go with Jakara and Last Legend winning these tag titles and and kind of just re like kind of re um restarting the women's tag division down in NXT. I think I think I'm gonna stick say Jade and Bianca hold on to for a little bit longer. Okay. Fair enough. A little lo- I don't think like they're not gonna I don't think it's coming at Crown Jewel, but they're gonna drop soon. I don't think they have a lot of time left. Yeah, I, I, I would agree with that. I don't want Chelsea and Piper to win, and that's no offense to them. I want Chelsea to get the mid card title whenever that comes. I would love that for her. Chelsea deserves a title so much. Like I her want to say her work is absolutely amazing. She's so fucking funny. <laughs> like, I want to say that I think that, like, Chelsea and Piper could win the tag titles, but I don't see it for them. No. I also like Piper better by herself, but that's another story for another day. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it is. I mean, Piper's only there because Carmella hasn't come back. Yeah, that too. <laughs> you know, but Piper does her real well. She is really, she's a really funny straight person. For for a child. She is. <laughs> She's really funny. Uh, so it works out. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's all we have for our crown jewel uh preview right now. Obviously, we're gonna crown it real quick. How many crowns is it gonna be? One being the worst thing in the world, ten being you know the greatest thing of all time, aka WrestleMania 40. Um at this point. Uh I'm uh Kay, I'll have you go first. How do you where do you think this will land? I'll give it like a seven five. Okay. All right, that makes sense. I myself, I think, I think I'm going to go with this being probably their best crown jewel performance ever. I would agree with that. Um, due to obviously you have a gimmick that kind of fits, that kind of fits, you know, the 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 show and where they're at. Um, you have a lot more representation of gender and, and age and talent from all four brands or all three brands, sorry, being represented. There's a lot of variety. You know, I feel like the matches now, because remember when the first crown jewels happened and like greatest Royal Rumble, these, these really didn't mean anything for the grand scheme of the, of the programming. Oh, they were horrible. They were filler matches to bring back old guys. Exactly. And now that they've kind of found, found a way to put it into, like, you know, the schedule and the timeline of WWE. So I think this is a this is one where it's actually really going to mean something. And a lot of that crowd is always into it. Like, it's going to be a WrestleMania-level show, in presentation at mm-hmm. least. So I'm going to go with an eight. I agree with what Charles says where it's, he said 7.5 overall, 9 for a crown jewel. I would agree with that. Yeah. Like as a pay per view to seven five, but like definitely like high tier for a crown jewel. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so I'm looking forward to it. Remember, folks, it is at one p.m. on a Saturday in the states, one p.m. in the uh, Eastern time, ten a.m. on the West Coast. Um, crown jewel is is a brunch pay per view, which, by the way, I love so much. <laughs> There's nothing like Fucking waking up and doing like pancakes and wrestling <laughs> or whatever your food of choice is. Ah, I'm so happy for it. Uh, it's the last one we're going to get for a while. Except the Elimination. Last brunch paper. No, Elimination Chamber, I think it's going to be in the UK. Oh, very good. So another brunch time paper. Potentially, room. yes. Potentially, that's that's what that's what it's going to be. So that pretty much concludes the show for us uh, this week. Any final words, Kayfabe? What's the score for Yankees? You've been really good for us lately. Um, thank you, thank you. Um, same score. Um, let me double check. What the is it? Yeah, what is the inning? <laughs> um, let me double. Check. We're at commercial. Let's see. World Series twenty twenty four. We're at the top of the fifth. Um, wait, the Dodgers apparently scored, and I missed it. I guess so. Oh, so it's five four Yankees top. Ah, uh, it's too fucking close. <laughs> It's too fucking close. Yeah. 
God damn it. All right. So obviously no, no, no fucking post show or whatever. Cause we're going to, I'm going to go watch the Yankees and probably uh, finish this. I'm, I'm like more than halfway done with the storm book. And so I should probably put a dent into that. You know, to kind of Ooh. quell my anxiety of this damn game. I just don't want the Yankees to get swept at this point. I don't either. <laughs> I feel bad. You know, um, so, so we'll see what happens. Well, with that being said, folks, let's get the fuck out of here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Ladies and gentlemen, you have been listening to Kings of the Rings podcast, episode number 392, Crown Fools. And we are no fools to the Crown Jewel premium live event that's happening this Saturday, 1 p.m. on the East, 10 a.m. Uh, on in specific time. I've been your host, King Ricky Rose. You can find me at Ambassador Biggs across all social media outlets, B-I-G-Z, Ambassador Biggs, Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter, Snapchat, some people's DMs, less people's text messages. Probably changing my profile picture on all those sites very, very soon. Uh, B-I-G-Z. Yeah, yeah, I think you guys deserve my face after being away for like over a year. <laughs> um, I've also been very artsy with my selfies lately. I just haven't posted them. Anywho, find Kings of the Rings podcast at K-O-T-R underscore podcast across all social media outlets. Uh, like, share, subscribe, leave us five star reviews, buy some of our pretty fantastic merch. Uh, if you're listening to us, make sure you're listening to us on Wrestle Attic Radio, the cure for the common wrestling podcast. Follow Wrestle Attic Radio socials at addict underscore wrestle on Twitter because no one wants to call it X and at Wrestle Addict Radio, all one word, everywhere else on social media. Big K, K Fabe, what you got for me? Alrighty, um, I have a dog to give ice cream to yes. and to watch Charlie Brown yes. with. You can find me on Instagram, uh, TikTok, and Threads at k a e underscore f a b e k fave. I forgot you're on Please Threads. Go- I recently made a thread. Oh, you, you should be following me. I was just me. curious about it. I am following you. It's a cleaner um, Twitter. That's exactly what it is. I like missed scrolling through Twitter, but I don't miss Twitter. <laughs> yeah, you'll you'll be privy to a lot of interesting information from me on threads if you follow my if you follow my stuff. Oh, I follow your threads. Please go vote, y'all. If you are registered to vote, if early voting exists in your area, that is available to you. Election day is next Tuesday. Please fucking vote. Seriously, seriously. Please, please do. I voted yesterday. It was actually fantastic. Uh, very, very simple. Woo! Yeah, yeah, get it, get it out of the way. I have to plan. I'm. I have to figure out what I'm gonna go. Yeah, I can, I have some resources have for you to off. help to help you with your with your planning for voting. I already. Oh, I already know where to go. Who I'm voting oh, for. Okay. Where all my thing. Oh, I'm already like. I I have a plan. I should figure out what day. <laughs> Good job. And figure figure out your time frames and when you want to go to. Anywho, folks. When we come back, hopefully next week, I will find out who the crown jewel champions are. We'll start our build to to war games. Something probably happened in the NXT parking lot. Uh, America may be a completely different place who the hell knows oh god but I do know one thing for sure and one thing that is for certain is that we will never vote for Slack because fuck Mm -mm. you Slack goodbye good night we'll see you soon and for the love of god go out and vote Jesus Christ later kids this has been a Wrestle Attic Radio branded podcast.